Well, good morning and welcome to Worship with Carmichael Presbyterian Church. It's a wonderful day for us to be together on May 30th. It is Trinity Sunday, a day when we consider the nature of God and the relationships that God calls us into and the relational nature of God. I'm glad that you are here today in worship with us. I invite you to, to sign in and let us know who you are. You can sign in by uh, clicking on that link. It's a Google form, and you can find that link on the church website. It's in the bulletin or the e-parish notes. My name is Ivan Herman, associate pastor here, along with my colleague, uh, Pastor Keith DeVries, and it is a joy to lead in this time of worship with you. Um, as you do register your attendance, I also invite you to share any prayer requests you may, you may have. Uh, put those in the notes uh, that are on that registration form. Stick around for a few moments after the service today and you'll see an art show that uh, encourages us to remember this Memorial Day weekend, those who have served and died in the service of our nation. And then uh, after the art show, come on to Zoom. Uh, Zoom, we have a coffee fellowship time on Zoom. Today is our last one. Uh, we're gonna take a break through the summer uh, so we invite you to join together and um, tell a few stories and catch up with one another over Zoom at about 11 o'clock. We do continue to have worship services in person at 8.45 in McMillan Hall every Sunday. And then um, at 10 o'clock, we live stream our service to you uh, on your device, wherever it is that you may be. But we are, we are starting to see things reopen. We are starting to... Uh, to engage more and more opportunities locally, and we are also opening the office a few more days each week. So we will be open, uh, expanded office hours, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from nine to four. Um, taking a break, of course, tomorrow is a holiday, but uh, in the upcoming weeks, we'll be open those three days a week. Uh, come by and see us if you need something from the church. We also have some more activities coming up in the summertime. We have an I Go Green Day Camp for kids on June 5th through June 9th. And so you can, see, uh, uh, you can see more information about that in the bulletin. Actually, that is July 5th through 9th, not June. Uh, July 5th through 9th from 9 to noon. And we need a few arts and crafts materials for that. And uh, you can see that we need some half-gallon cartons, some 8-ounce yogurt containers, and some Pringles cans without the food in them. So it's an opportunity to reuse uh, some of the things that you might have around the house or might be collecting over the next few weeks. Um, so contact Lisa Torgerson if you have some of those items that could be used for crafts for our kids. And then we also have a VBS to go also in July, and you, you'll see more about that in upcoming weeks. Well, do take a look in the parish notes. There are other things happening in the life of the church. Our, our uh, prayer shawls continue to meet, and uh, uh, a couple of other groups are meeting this week, including our deacons, uh, and you'll see more information about that in our parish notes. But now I'd like to invite you to join together in the call to worship as we begin this time together. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. In God, we live and move and have our being. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Let us open our hearts to listen. May the Lord give strength to the people. May holy three in one bless the earth with peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together now our opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
doctrine of the Trinity is a mystery. And yet we believe that God is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. With humility, faith, and hope, we confess the things we have done and left undone, as well as the shortcomings and injustices in our society and our world. So I invite you to join me now in the unison prayer of confession. Holy triune God, you so loved the world, continue to love the world, and will always love the world. Forgive us for our abuse of your created order and its intended harmony. Forgive us for our violence against our fellow creatures, including those made in your image. Forgive us for our indifference and cynicism and our callousness. Cast out our fear with the faith that you can do all things and renew a right spirit within us. Now take a few moments of silent prayers of confession. People of God, hear the good news. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. Now in gratitude and faith, we sing together our response, the Gloria Patri. Well, good morning, everyone. Great to be with you here on this Memorial Day and uh, invite uh, my friends and uh, their families to join with me on the steps of the sanctuary here uh, on this Memorial Day weekend and on this beautiful Sunday morning. I thought we might first just talk a little bit about your plans for Memorial Day uh, or for this weekend. What are some of the things that you like to do uh, with your family on Memorial Day? Um, eat, right? Barbecue, Something fun to eat. Uh, water. It has to involve water, right? Right? Claire, maybe? Chloe? Pool, uh, river, lake. Something to cool you down. And you're going to need to be cooled down this weekend. What? 100 and something today and 100 and something tomorrow? All right. Stay cool either in the pool or with that AC going. Um, yeah, last year, I don't think we got to do quite so many things on Memorial Day. Uh, last year, we were kind of just in the middle of the pandemic and things were all locked down. And, but this year, things are a little different and opening up. And so I hope that you'll be safe out there on this Memorial Day when you spend time with your family. The other thing I want to mention about Memorial Day is uh, historic in nature. Uh, Memorial Day started as Decoration Day uh, in 1868. And it was a Decoration Day was to honor and remember those who lost their lives in the Civil War. Uh, it later became Memorial Day and was officially blessed as a national holiday in 1971, and it was then intended to include all of those serving in the military uh, who may have lost their lives in the service of their country. A time of remembering, uh, of honoring those family members of ours who have served. 
Well, I want to talk a little bit about family because today I'm going to be reading from uh, the book of Romans. And we're, uh, this is Trinity Sunday, and we're talking about how we are uh, the family of God um, and how we are together as God's family, uh, as God's adopted children, um, and how as the family of God, uh, we know and relate to God as, as God, our, our heavenly parent or father, creator. Uh, we know and relate to our God as a God of love incarnate uh, through Jesus Christ. And we know and relate to God as family as God's holy breath or spirit, uh, God's holy spirit that blows mightily. Uh, this is the way that we understand and know God and as we serve God uh, in the community as God's family. And so I just no hope and trust that as you spend time with your family, you'll remember that you're a part of the family of God here at CPC. Uh, and we gather together together. Uh, to share the love of God in all of its many forms. And I hope that you will be safe this weekend and have a great Memorial Day. So God bless you. See you next time. Please sing with us.
Thank you, music team. <clears throat> One of my uh, favorite, favorite songs. And thank you, Claire, for joining uh, the music team today. That was great. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans as he talks about what it means to be a family of God. Hear now God's word to us. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. May God bless to us the reading of God's holy word. Amen. So let me ask you this question. How would you describe your family? Either the family you grew up in or the family you are a part of now. And do any of the following words characterize your experience of family? Loving, accepting, gracious, flawed, imperfect, distant, blended, chosen, adopted, close, loyal, dependable, dysfunctional, non-functional, hyper-functional. Painful, abusive, judgmental. It may be true that all of these words describe your experience of family at one time or another. How we experience family also provides fodder for the creative minds who have brought to us a plethora of TV families over the years where their depiction may seem either unreal and unattainable or it might just strike too close to home. Some of my favorite TV shows that depict family life over these past many decades include, of course, Leave it to Beaver, Happy Days, All in the Family, Family Ties, Parenthood, Blackish, The Middle, Modern Family, this is us, and there is quite a few, quite a few others. Um, what's your favorite family TV show? Being part of a family, whether it is biological or adopted, or one that shares a common faith like we all do here at CPC, all provide us with a sense of belonging and inclusion. And as we talk about being part of the family of faith. It is important to remember that the Christian life is not just about one's private relationship with God, but it's about treating one another with love and respect as members of the family. Our text from Romans today reminds us that we all belong to God's family, and because of God's faithfulness, we are able to claim the status of children of God through adoption. On this Sunday, when we affirm the holy mystery of the Trinity that is rooted in God's relationship with God's self, we do so not by trying to provide some systematic account for the nature of the Trinity, but, as Jennifer V. Pyatt's comments, by, quote, presenting a compelling snapshot of what it means for Christians to live in the very life of the triune God. Then throw into the mix Claudio Carvalho's comment 
about his Christian belief in God as one in three, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, providing the basis for his understanding of the Trinity. And he says this, it's really all about, quote, how God moves, relates, dances, and manifests God's self in the world, always through relations. So here we have in Romans Paul's appeal to the Christian community for gratitude for our status as adopted children of God in relationship with God. Once again, a comment from Jennifer Pites who says, quote, in the best cases, to be adopted is to be chosen, included, and loved. Or as a parent once told her adopted child, they can know that they are especially loved because their parents chose them in particular to be part of the family. By telling them this, that parent hoped it would instill in them a deep sense of belonging and being loved that would shape their identity and how they are to live their lives. In this letter, Paul uses the language of Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane to affirm the intimacy of God's relationship with Jesus and with all of us as adopted children and joint heirs. The key word in this prayer is Abba. In the Aramaic, it can be literally translated as Daddy, often translated in the English as Father. The same word, of course, that we start the Lord's Prayer with. This word denotes intimate, familial relationships used by both adults and by children. When we begin to pray, as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, two things happen. First, by using the word our, Jesus rescues us from our reduction of the Christian faith into the personal, subjective, and private, and places us into the communal, making our prayerful communication with God a means of loving our neighbor and of being dependent upon the prayers of our neighbor as well. And then secondly, when using Abba, we have been invited into a first name relationship with God, using the name that Jesus uses when he addresses God. By using that rich language, Abba, Beverly Gaventa says, we also affirm that God stands near at hand. To cry out to God with the language of a child is simultaneously to confess need and to claim our relationship. Only those who know God's spirit can call on God in this way, by using this language. We make it clear then that we have been claimed by God in Christ as God's children. And not only children, but heirs together with Christ, sharing in the intimate relationship with our triune God. So in our text, Paul reminds us that we are called to live lives then that reflect our identity as adopted children who are chosen in love. We thus lay claim to our identity as members of God's family and joint heirs with Christ, who are led by God's spirit as children of God. In claiming that identity, we also confront the lie that our identity and self-worth depend on anything other than the triune God's self-giving love. In claiming our identity as adopted children of God, we discover that the playing field has been leveled. God's family is not hierarchical, but rather a group of fellow heirs, joint heirs with Christ, who participate in the life and ministry of this faith family, not as individuals, but as partners together in community. What we learn is that as God's adopted children and joint heirs with Christ, we are recipients of God's all-inclusive love. Or as Gareth Higgins asserts, quote, we are welcomed and welcoming participants in the evolution of love. 
I know that one of the things that we have sorely missed the most during the pandemic, with all of its many restrictions, has been personal interaction with our sisters and brothers in Christ, joint heirs in Christ. And even as we have been able to gather in person at McMillan Hall <clears throat> over these last three months, we have all changed. Our world has changed and is changing. And in some cases, we've forgotten how to be that welcoming presence in the Carmichael community. As we reclaim our identity as adopted children of God, chosen and loved, let us relearn how to welcome one another into the inclusive nature of God's family here at CPC. Let us rediscover how to partner in ministry as God's family, to share the good news of God's love, and to pray for one another without ceasing. In 1985, Ann Weems published a book called Family Faith Stories, a collection of her family's favorite stories. It seems appropriate then with a sermon title of We Are Family, that I conclude this sermon by reading from Anne's last chapter and the last story from her book. It is aptly titled, The Family of Faith. My family faith stories are not extraordinary. They could be stories of any number of families. The important thing is that every generation has taught its children that our roots are roots of faith. When I was a child, we used to beg our parents to do something by saying, everybody's doing it. We soon learned that we weren't everybody. We were those who were committed to a faith that expressed love and justice for the nobodies of these world, as well as for the somebodies and even for the everybodies. My inheritance has been this faith, but my responsibility is to leave it to the next generation. In the church, we are all in a faith family, and we have our faith stories written in the pages of the book. Our faith is our inheritance, and we have the responsibility to tell our faith stories so that others can hear them. Each Palm Sunday... Our congregation meets in the room beneath the sanctuary to go in procession with our palms out the side door, around the front door, and into the sanctuary. We are led by bagpipers who played their hearts out. One year, Dr. Walter Brueggemann was preaching, and he and Don and the bagpipers were leading the happy processional when a young man in the apartment house across the street threw up the window and yelled, What's all that racket about? You sound like the Salvation Army. Dr. Brueggemann looked up at him and said, Son, we are the Salvation Army. Yes, in procession through the ages, we keep coming, waving our palms in celebration of our faith story of a man who is willing to live for us and to die for us that we might have life abundant. We do not, as a people of faith, have to be intimidated by those who would silence us. We have a story to tell, and it's a story about ending slavery, whether it's in Egypt or Scotland or St. Louis. We do not have to be silenced by the seduction of security or success. We do not have to be coerced and controlled by consumerism. Our story is not one of pride and prejudice, but it is one of peace. One of my favorite biblical faith stories is that of Joseph. I've always wanted a multicolored robe, not so that my brothers could bow down to me, but so that when I wore my rainbow robe, everyone who saw me could see my faith story and know to whom I belong. Now, I don't have a rainbow robe, but I do think we as Christians need to wear our faith so that the world may see and know to whom we all belong, God's adopted children. We are members of God's family. May it be so today and every day. Amen and amen. Let us pray together. 
Gracious God, thank you for the invitation, for choosing us, for loving us as your adopted children. May you bless us as we bear witness to that amazing and gracious and loving act each and every day. And as we invite others to join the family of God as well. This we ask and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please sing with us. Through the Trinity, God has blessed us with more than we could ever give in return. We have become the children of God through the power of love. So our response to that love, to that grace, should neither be in fear nor compulsion, but out of gratitude for the grace given to us by the one who has loved us and loved the world. So I invite you to join with me now in a moment of prayer as we dedicate all that we have to give, all that we are, and all that we do to God's service. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord Almighty, may our gifts and our offerings praise you and bring grace to your world. Make us instruments of your peace, for you are merciful and you are mighty. To God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we pray. Amen. We join together in a time of prayer, lifting up the joys and the concerns in our community of faith. And so I invite you to turn to page two of your parish notes, and you will find there the list of names that, uh, of folks we pray for uh, this morning, and I invite you to pray for them also during this week. And as we begin our time of prayer together, we learned yesterday of the death of John Irwin. So I invite you to stand as you are able uh, or rise in spirit as we give thanks for John's life. 
And we give thanks that he has joined the great gathering of saints that have gone before and that he has now been embraced into the arms of his creator in life, in death now as he was in life. Um, John was in declining health, and so we lift up prayers for, uh, for his family, for his wife, Dee, and we give thanks for the gifts that God gave him and the gifts that he shared with us as a community of faith. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you for standing, for rising for John in honor and in memory of him. You're welcome to be seated. Uh, we do uh, lift up prayers for, um, for victims of violence uh, in, in our world, in our nation, and in our community. We lift up prayers for Joshua Troutman, who is a pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Geneva, rather, Geneva Presbyterian Church in Modesto. Uh, he was a victim of road rage violence last week um, and is going to take some time to recover. So we pray for healing for him and... Um, and we also pray for his assailants. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers for Nadine Hills. Nadine is in declining health, and we pray for her in her care. And we pray for Ed, her husband, as well. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We uh, continue to lift up prayers for, uh, for Lois Griffin uh, as her family is, is making decisions on how best to care for her in her failing health. Uh, we pray for, uh, for good care for her and for wisdom and decision-making for family. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for Dick Piper. Dick has entered into hospice care and was struggling earlier in the week and still is struggling but uh, is, is improving slightly um, in his stable uh, condition. So we, we pray for we pray for Dick and for his family as well. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. I invite you to join now in this time of prayer as we lift up our concerns and our celebrations for the world. O oh, blessed Trinity, we praise you as creator, redeemer, and sustainer of our world and the cosmos beyond. We remember that we did not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption that allows us to call you Abba, Father. Like a loving mother who wraps her arms around us, your love is stronger than our fear. You invite us into the biggest story there is, the old, old story of your love for the world that is renewed each and every morning. While your identity as three persons is a mystery to us, what is not a mystery is the terrible reality of violence and suffering that we participate in and are victims of. As our nation this weekend remembers our dead, we also place our hope and our faith in a vision that peoples shall not make war against one another. We praise you for the grace of being called children, your own children. We ask for the courage to live into that calling and for our hearts and minds to be opened to your spirit in our place and time, including by the empowerment of others. We pray for healing. We pray for wholeness from the pandemics of COVID-19, white supremacy, and climate change. We pray for those who can't breathe due to air, air pollution and oppression. We pray that your church through truth and reconciliation will join together across divisions and divides to exhibit the diversity and unity that is your gracious intention. Spirit of the living God, Move again in our time like a breath of fresh air, giving life, giving liberty. Make us instruments of your peace and harmony. Through spiritual disciplines and acts of contemplation, kindle our holy imaginations and guide us into ministries of healing and wholeness. For you, O holy three in one, 
are in relationship with your own self. May your children be led by the Spirit to be in right relationship with one another as well. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go forth from this place, from your homes, out into the world this week, knowing that you are blessed, that this faith family is blessed, reminded that we are adopted children of God, and we belong to God's family. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the extraordinary love of God, and the fellowship and communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen and amen. Thank you.